Hey everybody, thank you guys for waiting out there. I'm Judy, the YouTube lawyer. Today we're going to have an open discussion about a new video that Deep Dive True Crime just put out on his channel late last night, which was um, almost complete video of the police interview slash interrogation of Jeffrey Lacoste, who is a um, very important witness regarding the murder of Dan Markell. So I see a lot of people have already been chatting in the chat box here. And um, just off the top of my head, my initial impression watching the videos was that um, Jeffrey Lacoste is a very, very credible and very brave person. I was struck by how, um, how stressed out he seemed throughout the interrogation, especially the very first interview that he did, which was just a few days after Dan Markell was shot. So those were things that I couldn't really get from just reading the transcript of the police interviews. And someone had already given me the full transcripts of all three interviews, probably about two to three months ago. So I had already read the full transcript. But um, of course, this is my first time seeing so much of the actual footage. So thank you, Mentor Lawyer Deep Dive True Crime for um, editing out the videos and putting it together so that we, the public, can see for ourselves what Lacoste was saying. So um, let's see here. So I'll start scrolling through some of the comments here. Um, there were a few, as you guys have probably seen, there were a few negative comments that were kind of bashing Jeffrey Lacoste and saying that he seemed really disgruntled and how come he didn't mention the $15,000 um, cost of a hitman when he was first interviewed by the police. But just looking over the video really quickly this morning, it looked like the officer was trying to get some more details about this so-called hitman suggestion that uh, Wendy had told Lacoste about. And his you can tell his mind is racing in a million different directions. He just looks like he hasn't slept well at all, that he's just really scared and stressed out, and he is concerned for his own safety. So I think that's also why he asked if this was if this was off the record or he wanted to say some stuff that wasn't on the record because he was really concerned about his safety. So um, I don't hold it against him that he didn't immediately come out and say, oh, and by the way, Charlie said that the hitman would cost about $15,000. I don't hold that against him at all because he did say a lot of things at the first interview um, he maintained his side of the story repeatedly throughout. And, um, you know, I think in the heat of the moment, people aren't going to remember every single little detail. But it is pretty impressive that um, I think he mentioned something about how he kept a day planner or a calendar or something. He's very detailed. So that's why later on he was able to look through his old day planner notes or whatever record he had and was able to pinpoint more of the dates as to when everything happened. So um, thank you all for being here. Um, Harley D says, this, this was groundbreaking witness testimony. I watched it three times over last night. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely worth watching again and again. I've watched it maybe one and a half times so far and read the the actual transcript at least two or three times. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Hi, Tony. Hi, Angela. And Fancy Fiction is here also. So Barbara says, Lacoste said something that made me look at this case in a whole new light. He used the word fraud. Was there more than one motive to have Dan Markell murdered? Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I'm not sure. I mean, other than they wanted to get rid of him so that uh, allegedly Wendy and the kids could move down to South Florida. So there was such intense hatred on the part of the Adelsons, according to Lacoste, against Dan Markell. Yeah. So it's a cloudy day in Los Angeles, but I have a sunny disposition. <laughs> okay, that's great. Yeah, good attitude. Um, hi, Sophia. Thank you. And Stella is here also. Okay, Jason, thank you for being here. He says, I watched this too and had been curious to see this in full. 
in La Casa's first interview, he mentions Charlie Adelson to other law enforcement and then Isom, who of course already had heard of him from Wendy. Yes, it's um, it's great that I guess like Charlie, Wendy couldn't keep things to herself too well either, and she couldn't resist spilling the beans and mentioning to Lacoste about um, what Charlie Charlie's plans were. Not breaking news, but you can see where Isom was thinking pretty quickly and with good reason. Yeah, I mean, the only frustrating thing about the police interviews was the fact that the phone kept ringing. So, you know, it just totally breaks up the flow when somebody's just trying to get at something that could be really helpful information. And then you hear, hear a cell phone ringing. And yeah, um, let's see. Yeah, I was also struck by how much downtime there was. And I know Mentor Lawyer already edited out a lot of parts of the interview, he said, when when Lacoste is just sitting there alone and stuff. But but there's still plenty of times when you just see, you know, poor Jeff Lacoste sitting there looking incredibly beat and stressed out. And he's just like sitting there and pausing a lot before he says stuff. So those are all things that you can't get from just reading a transcript. The more we hear about Charlie and Wendy, the more I'm convinced they're a pretty equal team rather than Wendy being the innocent baby sister and Charlie being the big bad protector brother. Yeah, I totally agree. I mean, after I read the whole entire transcript of Lacoste's three interviews, I was really stunned and appalled at the depth of the deception that he was describing and uh, really do feel like this uh, brother-sister team are pretty similar in their personalities or the way that they treat people. Yes, although I guess one person is a little better at hiding things and putting on a facade. So just my opinion, yeah. He figured the case out three days after Dan's murder. Yeah, and I think as time went on, as he realized that um, he had been had, that, um, you know, it, it so it seemed that Wendy had already been talking him up to friends and other people to make him out to be a jealous stalker. Um, so uh, didn't he say also that Wendy, yeah, Wendy was ignoring his texts and didn't even, didn't even talk to him until at least 10 days, 10 days or so after Dan was shot. Yeah. Hi, True Lifestyles. Thank you for being here also. Look forward to your next video. Okay. So everybody's saying hi. Yeah. Thank you guys. <laughs> Sorry about that. Usually it doesn't take me that long to drive back and forth to the courthouse. So yeah, tons to unpack. Yeah. Thank you, Fancy. I thought it to be ironic that Wendy said she always deletes her calendar, but Jeff had all her travel to South Florida marked down on his calendar. She totally underestimated him. Yeah. And of course that, that made him seem like a stalker, right? <laughs> because he would, he kept notes as to where he was and where she happened to be, I guess, because they were in a relationship together. Yeah. Thank you, Laser Wolf. I'm so curious how many trips she took to South Florida in the months leading up to the murder. Yeah. Well, yeah, it seems like she was down there anytime she was able to be there because she and Dan had this week on week off type of um, custody arrangement. And Dan also mentioned in some of his family court filings that sometimes Wendy would take the kids out of school, out of preschool or daycare, and spend even more time down in South Florida to be with, to be with her family. Yeah, definitely. He's a, a, a really great witness for Wendy or against the Adelsons, I would say. Yeah. And for that reason, I am concerned about his safety. I hope he has all sorts of security cameras and, you know, I wish he could be in some sort of protective, I don't know what the police can do, you know, to offer protection to him. Yeah. Okay. So we're all chatting amongst ourselves. Okay. Okay. Stella Bella, Lacoste thought she had another guy there because she went so many times. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. Especially thanks to Fancy's wiretap uh, phone call where Charlie was mentioning back in spring of 2016 something about how Wendy had supposedly been with Dave for about two years. So, I mean, of course, 
we don't know how accurate he is with that timing and stuff. But, um, you know, Lacoste did say that when she would go down at South Florida, there would be plenty of times that she wouldn't even respond to his, to his text or talk to him on the phone while she was there. Okay. Great. Beautiful day in New Jersey. Okay. Yep. Totally possible. Like Charlie having multiple girlfriends, Wendy may have had multiple boyfriends. Yeah. And there are parts that were edited out from <coughs> Deep Dive True Crime's latest video where um, there are some more salacious details there. Um, how many innocent people and children have been caught up in the Adelson's hate for Dan? Yeah, that's right. I mean, so many kids' lives have been ruined because of this. Yeah. I guess that's what sociopaths do. Yuck. I also wouldn't be surprised if we learned that Wendy never actually purchased a ticket to California. Yeah, I, I agree. Yeah. Okay, Wendy is a master manipulator. Yeah, I mean, that's what I was like really taken aback reading all the details that Lacoste had to say to the police officers. And it was kind of like the same feeling I had after reading Ruth Markell's book too. It's like, wow, you know, these people along with Dan went through it all and the patterns of, of behavior that, that they were, um, that they had to endure because of the Adelsons or Wendy, allegedly. Um, you know, it, it's just really appalling and seems to be a similar pattern. It's a stunning day in autumn. Okay, that's great. Okay. Um, I don't understand all the driving this family did between Tallahassee and Miami. You have an airline flight from Miami to Tallahassee for one hour and 30 minutes, and they had plenty of money for tickets. Yeah, I mean, well, it's probably also because they had children. Oh, and also, I mean, it doesn't matter that they had so much money, because remember in those emails between Donna and Wendy, she was harping on how expensive the food was for those two boys. You know, like eventually they're going to be growing bigger and they're going to eat more than just yogurt or whatever. And she said something about how, like, do you want to see those receipts from the grocery store from her buying all the groceries for her grandsons to eat? You know, so, um, yeah, so they're still pretty cheap. And I'm sure they were really mad because of all the expense and the time and the uh, so-called lost income to the dental practice because the parents had to, especially Donna, had to keep going up and down to Tallahassee to help take care of the grandchildren. Yeah. So, uh, so yeah, I mean, there are definitely plenty of people with tons of money who are still penny pinchers and complain about it all too. Hi, Nellie. I never even thought, never thought even for once in the beginning that Wendy is not involved in the murder of her husband, Dan Markell. Yeah. And um, now that we have seen more words from Dan's mother, um, apparently she also thought from the start that Wendy was involved also. But I think for the longest time, a lot of people did not want to come out publicly to say that. Yeah. You've just been promoted to detective style, Dora. I'm wondering if they didn't want a record of the trips. Uh, who knows? Or maybe they just felt like having children also, it would be easier for them to have their car because there's, I mean, I don't know. Is there public transportation in Tallahassee? I get the feeling it's still like a place where you really need to have a car to drive around. So, um, okay. So Jason SP says, I read Epstein's book yesterday. I know many take issue with his windy stance, as do I. I have prime books or whatever do free and that service covered the Donna call to the undercover cop, which I wanted to read. Yeah. I mean, it's, um, yeah, I definitely remember hearing, hearing some of Donna's call to the undercover cop, but I can't remember if it was in one of those TV specials or something, but either way, she didn't sound innocent in that call when, um, she was talking to the guy. Uh, let's see. I feel like I need to start writing cards down and connect the string and push pins. To, okay. Uh, okay. So UC is the undercover cop. Donna called the phone number for the undercover office. Yeah, I think so. Didn't she, did she call the number or did they call the Adelson Institute? Yeah. Oh, okay. So Jason, thank you so much for this information. Yes. He texted and she called lengthy call. 
that gets little play or I've missed it, but yes, cause minutes. Okay. Yeah. What does she tell him? I think of course she claims that, you know, they're not involved and she doesn't know what he's calling about. And, uh, Oh, okay. Thank you, Jason. <laughs> Jason's giving. Okay. Hope Epstein surprises me tomorrow on Surviving the Survivor. Yes, I will definitely be watching that also. Denies, 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 and tells him to go after the reward money versus $5,000 from her. Reveals stress, unbearable, etc. cetera. Uh, leaves it as Charlie did. Call you back. Okay. Yeah. Thank you for that information. It is so sad what she did to him. Jeffrey loved her very much. Yeah, he was totally smitten. And he later said he was under her spell also. How stupid is Donna to tell him that the stress is unbearable? <laughs> yeah, I mean, what could that possibly mean? Like the stress of knowing that her former son-in-law was murdered? I don't know. Yeah. Okay. Hi, Antoine. Thank you for being here. Donna did call the undercover cop, but I have never heard the recording, but the call is written up in the records. Okay. Yeah, there's just so much information out there. It's hard to remember. Like, where did we hear this from? Okay. First time heard about Wendy's student tried to kiss her from lips. Yeah. And then she was also worried. Well, I mean, this was her character in her novel, right? Was worried that the husband character would um, have an affair with one of his students. Yeah. Um, okay. Unfair judgment if viewers. He must have been scared. Esless. Oh, okay. Yeah. You're talking about Lacoste, right? Yeah. Because uh, I'm pretty sure he even mentioned at the first interview that um, he, he was concerned about his own safety because, you know, Danny Markell has just been murdered and, you know, he didn't know who who could be out there and who could come after him too. So. When I heard that, it rang true. Like Wendy told Lacoste to make him jealous. What what did you think? Oh, yeah. Well, she likes flattery, right? Like she couldn't even help herself, even at the police interview, telling the police officer that the guy at the ABC store had complimented her on her blue eyes. Yeah. So she likes that flattery and knowing that she had that kind of power over men who found her attractive. The thing that bothers me about Jeffrey is the fact that I'm pretty sure he would still be with Wendy had she not dumped him, even after all he had seen and heard says something about his character to me. Hmm. Well, I don't know. I don't know about now. I mean, now definitely he would not want to be with her. But yeah, it's, it's true that at the very first interview, he did say something about how there was like a tiny, tiny smidgen of a chance that they might get back together again. So he was conflicted. So, um, but I think that as time went on and he saw the way that she treated him and ignored him after Dan's death and her behavior and hearing more about what she had allegedly told friends about him, you know, I think he finally came to and he was released from the spell. Yeah. Hi, Sophia. Thank you for being here. Um, Jason says, I'm a fan of Lacoste, easy to cast aspersions, but I sure wouldn't want to be thrust in that situation. He's a hero in this case, implicates Charlie right off the bat, gives info on crazy Adelsons. Yeah, I, I agree with you, Jason. Yeah. It seems like Jeff saw the light after he spent some time away from being under her spell. So I don't think he'd get back with her after he realized how sociopathic he she is. Yeah, yeah, totally agree. Um, if he thought Wendy was halfway serious about looking into a hitman, maybe he should have thought about telling the authorities about it. It didn't seem to bother him too much. He stayed with her. Yeah, well, what was that? I think this conversation might have happened maybe the Monday or five five days or so before Dan was shot. And he said that it was just like, just out of the blue in some conversation about her, you know, staying in Tallahassee versus possibly being able to leave or whatever. But the hitman thing was referencing Charlie's plans back in 2013. So, I mean, it could have been that it didn't seem like Dan was in immediate danger um, when Lacoste heard that. But um, 
Yeah. Also, you do wonder, you know, would the police have taken him seriously or done anything if he had just gone to the police and said, hey, my girlfriend was talking and said that her brother looked into hiring a hitman to kill off her ex-husband last year. You know, I, I'm not sure. Yeah. Lacoste really was troubled by what he thought he knew. I think he went back in March of his own volition. Yeah, I, I think he went back there himself. So that that's really good, very upstanding person. Because, I mean, in a lot of criminal cases, you hear after the fact that, oh, you know, so-and-so said that they were never contacted by investigators. But it's like, well, then why didn't you even think about contacting the police directly yourself? You know, like people have to get involved if, if a crime is to be solved. Yeah. Um, he was under her thumb or spell, Bonnie and Clyde. But Michael was in the past and Lacoste was focused on the relationship. He even says he was so smitten he probably would go back. He was whipped. <laughs> I thought it is impossible for such an incident at campus. I can't delete the pathological lawyer, Wendy, from my brain. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure there are plenty of instances where a student and a teacher have improper relations. So it uh, sounds like it was Wendy's fantasy, right? Okay. Wendy lied to him and said the police told her not to talk to him. Yeah. Yes, he said Wendy was telling people he was a suspect, so she wasn't responding to him. Mm -hmm. Agreed Elliot student would be kicked out for kissing a professor. Yeah, but who knows if she reported him. I don't know what the reaction was. I would have loved to find out Wendy's reaction when she realized Jeffrey left early for his trip. Yeah. Yeah, although, um, yeah, it seems like Jane was still a conduit between the two of them right after Dan was shot because Jeffrey knew that um, Wendy was still responding to other friends' texts and Jane's texts while ignoring him. So... Yeah, who knows how, how she felt about that. Regardless, she broke it off with him. He said he'd have thrown himself under a bus for her. Why would you want to stay with someone like this and get involved with her weird family? Just overlook this. Yeah, well, I think he was referring to the throwing himself under a bus as, you know, in the past. Yeah, but um, who knows? I mean, in, in a lot of relationships, sometimes relationships are screwed up where somebody is just so happy and smitten that someone likes them and they're physically attracted to them and stuff. So their um, rationality goes out the window at times. Uh, okay, something I heard about Chucky Boy, how he violated a Korean girl on his dirty trips to other countries for underage girls. Yeah, that, that's pretty disgusting, yeah. So um, definitely that gave more detail than what um, Lacoste hinted at on the stand in the trial. So it makes you really feel that Charlie is just like a despic despicable, sadistic, you know, just as he's had no empathy, something is wrong with him. Yeah. Uh, he was very manipulated. She had the kids calling him dad and he badly wanted kids, etc. She's a master manipulator. Yeah. Was it actually true Dan Markell lost a job in Miami because he was a jerk? Well, um, that's what I'm not sure. But from what I recall from the Epstein book, and again, this is just my memory. It's been a long time since I read those actual words. Um, I think a lot of the professors at University of Miami actually liked him and wanted to give him the job. But ultimately, there was a maybe a female professor who didn't really like him and thought that he would never look her in the eye whenever she talked with him. So um, there was at least one person that really didn't like him. So ultimately, you know, the uh, people at that law school decided not to offer him a job. Yeah. So that's just my recollection there. I'm not sure what the truth really is, but bottom line is going to Miami and working was not an option for him really highlighted just how crazy the dynamic of this family was. Also, I heard him say Wendy told him Harvey was a very violent person. Her comments off the wall. Yeah, I don't know if, did she actually say Harvey was a very violent person? I think Lacoste just felt that um, she had mentioned abuse as a child, but then when he mentioned it again to Wendy, 
alluding to her abusive childhood, then she she got upset and denied it and said, what are you talking about? Something to that effect. Yeah. So um, so who knows? I mean, but it did sound like Lacoste was saying that Wendy's behavior was kind of weird that, um, you know, when she was around Dan or or if she faced any sort of criticism, she would just totally melt down or seem very scared, like someone that had previously been abused, maybe. Um, so it's it's just kind of questionable. I wonder when she wanted Jeffrey Lacoste to have her passwords to her accounts, if she wanted to make it look like he had hacked her or she wanted to use him as a scapegoat, if questionable. Yeah, I saw your comment on deep dive true crime, and I agree. It does sound really weird that it seemed like their relationship wasn't going well, but then suddenly she started love bombing him and wanting him to move in with her and wanted to give him her passwords. That's That's just very bizarre and kind of a red flag. Yeah, Wendy, what's a busy bee? Questionable things were found on her computer or phone. Yeah. Uh, do you think she was looking to pin the murder on Lacoste had he not left town a day earlier? Yeah, I, I think so. Or at the very least, you know, just muddy up the waters to make it look like, ooh, there's this other person that could have done it. So, yeah, because I, I still remember that... Um, at one of the trials, when they showed the rental car document during the first trip to attempt to kill Dan Markell, the rental car was a silver Nissan Altima, and Lacoste drove a silver Nissan Sentra. And um, ultimately, I think they, what happened? Like, they got a Hyundai Sonata later on. But, um, you know, as we know, the hitman on the day of the murder, um, they were driving a silverish, very, very faintly light greenish silver Prius. So I, I think, you know, when you look at it all, all together, it does look very, very suspicious. But ultimately, why would Lacoste even want to kill Dan Markell? That wouldn't have made any sense if Wendy were going to move away down to South Florida. If something happened to Dan, you know, then that would mean that she would probably be leaving Lacoste in Tallahassee. So you know, the, there really didn't seem to be any sort of motive anyway for for Lacoste mm -hmm. to just be so mad that Wendy broke up with him that, oh, he's going to kill her ex-husband. You know, that, that wouldn't have made any sense anyway. But I think that it was another diversion to, uh, you know, waste waste a police officer's time and make it look like somebody else could have could have killed Dan. Uh, what was the past? They only dated for three to four months. He'd probably still be with her if she didn't dump him. <clears throat> Even after all he saw and heard, he was still head over heels in love with her. No, I mean, again, we're, we're looking at the timeline here. I think he was still smitten by her a few days after the murder. But remember, she had already sort of broken up with him and told him not to contact her for seven days. And then ultimately, she ghosted him for quite a while after Dan's murder. And um, then he started hearing more about what uh, she had been telling friends about him that were not true, in his opinion. So um, yeah, so I think soon afterwards, he was definitely no longer in love with her. So yeah. Why Wendy? Okay. Um, I don't think Wendy thought she was incriminating herself. She was addressing negatives that could and would be found out. The Adelsons talked a lot of smack. Get in front of it. The only play. Yeah. It's it's like playing psychological games, right? Okay. Dan's uncle, who he adored when they initially told him, exclaimed the in-laws he knew. Yeah, exactly. And and I would have loved to have found out, you know, what was what was Ruth Markell's response when her when her uncle actually said that and had the outburst saying repeatedly it's the in-laws. Okay. Hi JPJ. Thank you for being here. I remember Donna calling the FBI agent but can't find it anywhere now. Yeah, that's why um, I'm not sure. I mean, that's another. I'm sure everybody is bugging mentor lawyer and emailing him nonstop, but maybe I'll send him an email later and ask him if he has a recording of that because I do remember hearing it somewhere. Yeah, a long time ago. Okay, in the interview, I thought they said he said they dated for nine months. Yeah, so 
my recollection is that he said they started dating in September, but it wasn't any sort of exclusive type of thing. And then after Valentine's Day or so, late February was when they became what he thought an exclusive couple. So, yeah. So, I mean, ultimately, they, they first started dating in September. Uh, let's see, that's Wendy's M.O. I remember Lacoste once said during one of the interviews by the investigators that he was also afraid he might be the next to be murdered because he was saying Wendy at the time. Yeah, so he definitely was pretty afraid, um, especially the first time. I just don't have a whole lot of respect for Jeffrey. I'm something he took what she was saying halfway seriously, which I think he did he would have dumped Wendy and gone to authorities before they murdered him. Yeah, I'm not sure. I mean, because he did say that Wendy would just <coughs> lie a lot to him or say stuff and then later deny it. And so, you know, maybe he just really didn't think that she was serious about that. So, yeah. And also, you know, it wasn't like she said, Charlie is looking to kill him now, you know, Allegedly, she had said that Charlie had looked into all options or looked into hiring a hitman back in the previous year, <coughs> which was <coughs> summer of 2013. So the urgency wasn't wasn't really there. So the families were too meshed into each other's lives, in my opinion, which is OK if they get along deadly if they don't. Yeah, that's that's what Lacasse's opinion is. And um, that's up his line of work, too. So. People do illogical things when they're being manipulated. Realistically, no one would have gone to the cops. That's hindsight. Jeffrey is incredibly self-aware. I was really impressed by his ability to read people. Yes. Do you think the police worked at Adelson Thread from the beginning or only after the link to the Prius was revealed in 2015? Hmm. Yeah, I, I would say probably from the beginning. I mean, although there were other theories that were being floated around that maybe somebody upset about Dan's work with the with the um, rabbi or some sort of legal case going on in New York could have had something to do with his murder or maybe this angry attorney that was posting negative things about Dan or just getting all worked up on the internet could have been behind his murder or some other women that he had dated could have been behind the murder, you know? I mean, so I, I have no idea when they started focusing on the Adelsons or Charlie Adelson, but um, it definitely was bolstered by information once they figured out the whole link to the Prius and the cell phone towers and who were the hit men communicating with. Yeah, so great detective work there. To this day, I'll never figure out why Wendy would have told Jeffrey that her brother was going to hire a hitman. Yeah, well, it, she supposedly said that the brother had looked into all options or had looked into hiring a hitman the previous year in 2013. But I think like she's sort of like Charlie in that she couldn't stop running her mouth and, and maybe she was trying to test Jeffrey's allegiance or just to see, you know, what's his reaction going to be. She couldn't help herself from, from talking. Yeah. Hi, Skeeter. Okay. Getting the headquarters ready for a grand opening. Okay. Thank you for listening. Oh, okay. I didn't realize it's, it's like 4.30 in the morning where you are. Thank you. Jeffrey Lacoste came off really smart, thoughtful, incredible. I don't see what motives he would have had to lie. Yeah. I mean, that would have been, yeah. He, he really didn't have a motive to lie. I mean, other than something that one of the jurors did mention is that the jury did con consider at Katie McDaniel's latest trial that, you know, perhaps he was upset that uh, Wendy had broken up with him. But nah, you know, like he gave so many details, so many things that also could have um, been followed up on that. Um, yeah, I find him really credible. Yeah. Charlie is a pedo. Yeah, he seemed to only have things for for very young women, you know, and who knows what underage kids, yeah, in the other countries. I think he's trying to look like a hero. I don't think he's a hero. He said he believed Charlie was capable of this kind of thing and how much hatred the family had towards Dan. It didn't bother him. 
Hmm. Yeah, but then again, like he he only met Charlie for I think he said like four hours that that one time, and then he also heard some things secondhand from what Wendy said about Charlie to him. But I think. I think like most people who are just starting to really get to know someone and dating somebody and kind of swept off his feet, I think Jeffrey Lacoste was more focused on trying to make the relationship work and being happy that he had a girlfriend and was, you know, getting to know her kids and everything. So I, I don't think her having a weird brother was enough at that point to make it seem like, oh, I got to break up with her now because her brother seems like a weirdo. Yeah. While Jeffrey was reading books with the kids, Wendy was crying in the kitchen right before the murder. Yeah. You have to remember Jeffrey was in therapy and probably had many revelations. Why does it seem like Stephen Epstein left out most of the most of the incriminating details Jeffrey Lacoste told police? Hmm. Yeah, I mean, I do wonder. I haven't read the newest version of his book yet, so. Um, yeah, but I, I definitely believe Jeffrey Lacoste and that he, he had no like weird or ulterior motives making stuff up. Did Stephen Epstein watch the March 16, 2015 interview? Yeah, that I'm not sure. I mean, I'm assuming he had access to all the transcripts. Yeah. Um, yeah, so not sure. Didn't they interview Lacoste shortly after Wendy, right after Dan was murdered? Why are you people acting like it was years after he said he was expecting them to want to speak? Yeah, so the first one, I'm pretty sure, was July 21st. Yeah, and then the next one was um, pretty soon after that also, maybe within just a couple of weeks or a few weeks. And then the last one was in March of 2015. Yeah. Okay. Hi, Christian. Thank you for being here. Hope you're doing well. I think the defense is going to have to address Lacoste aggressively at Charlie Adelson's trial. No one's done that yet. Everyone was more than happy to dish dirt on Wendy. I feel bad for Jeffrey Lacoste in this regard. Yeah. Well, it seems like he has a lot of lawyer friends or very intelligent friends that have been following this case. So hopefully he will be properly prepared for or any sort of brutal cross-examination. Yeah, and I did also want to mention, um, I've mentioned this on previous live streams, but um, in some of the deep dive true crime recent comments, people have asked, well, how come he didn't mention the $15,000? He's going to be asked about that. But I do recall there was somebody who had posted on Justice for Dan many years ago, claiming that a friend of Charlie's had approached him and um, said that Charlie was willing to pay, you know, trying to offer him something like $15,000 to kill Dan Markell. So um, I'm not sure how credible that person is or whatever, but I mean, it does sound kind of interesting that this other person is also corroborating that, um, that the figure of $15,000 back in 2013 was being thrown around through people who knew Charlie, you know, looking for someone to do the murder. He had intimate details of their hatred of Dan. He was close to Wendy, so inevitably the police were going to question him. Yes, Wendy told Jeff that her dad was an aggressive man. Okay, well, definitely Harvey's former friend found that out when Charlie made false accusations of sexual harassment against him. Yeah. What is ghosting? That just means like suddenly ignoring somebody and dropping off the face of the earth and again never corresponding with them. I think that helped Jeffrey Lacoste after his therapist confirmed she had traits of a sociopath. It helped him start the emotional separation. Yeah. Um, I agree he'll probably get beat up, but he's an honest, credible person, so you can't argue with the truth. Yes. And I would personally volunteer to help Jeffrey Lacoste prepare for cross-examination. <laughs> I don't know how much value that would be, but um, yeah, I mean, I'm sure he has plenty of help there in Florida. He has a, an attorney himself, I think, so. Wendy was telling her friends and Jeff's friends he did a crime of passion. Wow, okay. 
um, I think it was longer off and on. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So what I recall is that he said that they started dating in September, but it wasn't exclusive. And then it became, ex or he thought it became exclusive in late February, sometime after Valentine's Day, where he turned up the romance. And um, then, you know, they were going places and he was being announced as her boyfriend or whatever. So Okay, exclusively three to four months, but altogether nine months. They started casually at the start of the school year. She's so gross, but like both Dan and Jeffrey stated, only they know what a bad person she is behind closed doors. She's different, Wendy. I think she's really gross too. And by gross, I mean no empathy or conscience. Yes, she was. Then she told Jeffrey Lacoste, police told her not to contact him. Sounds like her testimony on the stand. Yeah, just like saying that, uh, you know, the attorney told her not to talk about it with <laughs> with other people. Oh, and, and that's similar to what um, Charlie Adelson allegedly told um, one of the dentists that he worked for. Like um, there was a dentist who wanted to know more details about Dan Markell's murder. And then Charlie Adelson told that dentist that um, he couldn't talk about it because his attorney told him not to do, not to talk about it. Yeah. And so that was not a good response for that dentist. So he stopped hiring Charlie to work at his office after that. He knew how much that whole family hated Dan with a passion. He said he's never seen anything like this diabolical. Their mission in life was hating Dan, the whole family. Yeah, and and as he said, he also really thought Dan was a jerk, you know, because that was based on things that Wendy had constantly told him about Dan. So he hated Dan Markell also. So it wasn't until later that he started realizing that um, perhaps he wasn't being told the full truth. Yeah, she's a liar head. Can you imagine what a day in the life of the Adelsons is now? How do they keep this case away from Dan's kids? Yeah, that's what I'm not sure unless they're closely monitoring their computer usage. Lacoste is a hero and Michael Palmer is probably Wendy or one of our little minions. I don't know. I mean, Michael has been on a bunch of live streams and said lots of lots of good, intelligent things. So the police asked him point blank, do you think Charlie would be capable of this? And Jeffrey said he wouldn't do the job himself, but hire someone to do it. Absolutely. I think they're still at the age where they can be shielded, wait a few years, and they'll see the forest for the trees. Yeah, you can't keep kids off the internet at all. You know, they even have internet access at school, so, or through their friends. If Epstein had published what Jeffrey had told investigators, it would put the Adelsons on alert about what the investigators knew. Epstein is an attorney, so he is aware of that. Yeah, but I, I think at this point, but yeah, the Adelsons already know what Jeffrey Lacoste has said about them, you know, because, um, you know, I'm sure Wendy, as well as her attorney, had access to all these things that have already been made publicly available, such as the transcripts of the police interviews of all the people involved. Also, Lacoste had just gotten divorced and Wendy was love bombing him. <clears throat> the sex chemicals released in the brain are intoxicating. Poor judgment happens when drunk in love. Yeah, that's what I've read also. And a friend of mine who's also a divorce attorney has mentioned that many times that, you know, when you first fall in love with someone and things are getting physical and stuff, you know, there's something that changes in your brain where you just kind of lose your good judgment. Yeah. So normally it takes about half a year or more before those um, swept off your feet feelings um, die down and then you become more rational about things <laughs> from what I've read. Okay. Perhaps Wendy was using Charlie's connections with bad people to scare Jeffrey off as he was fairly intense about their relationship. Yeah. Who knows? Yeah. Uh, sex is a powerful drug. Oxytocin is the love hormone. Wendy has a loose character hopping from one man to another. Jeffrey is lucky he didn't catch some disease from her. Okay. Especially in the beginning of her relationship, she had him hooked. Ha ha, Sophia, I thought that too. Okay, I thought about that too. Great minds think alike. Okay. Yeah. Um, let's see. Christy. 
because I don't consider La Casa a hero. It doesn't mean I have any sympathy for Wendy or the Adelsons. There's a special place in hell for all of them. And because I don't agree with you, it doesn't make you right. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay, we have three minds thinking alike. Wendy was telling everybody nobody liked Dan. Yeah, definitely a lot of people really liked Dan and were devastated by his death. So wish Jeffrey would have gotten a dog after his divorce to fill the void instead of Wendy. Oh, okay. Jeffrey said Charlie had antisocial behavior and was in special ed. Yeah, that was interesting to hear. Yeah, special ed. But yet he still graduated from college and somehow he graduated from dental school. Hmm. Okay. Okay. Sincere apologies to Michael Palmer. Angela says, I like you, Michael Palmer. We just disagree on this one. You're all right. <laughs> okay. Oh, excuse my typos. Michael Palmer, I enjoy hearing your point of view. Some people get off being a contrarian on YouTube and maybe even Dan Markell at times and perhaps me once in a blue moon. Okay. Thank you, Fancy. Yeah. The Adelsons have to be essing bricks. I'm sure that Donna and Harvey on men are on many anti-anxiety medications. Yeah because Donna was already taking anti-anxiety medications back in 2016 um, based on the wiretaps and what June said. Uh, so true, Lakash should have gotten a golden retriever. Oh, yeah, golden retrievers are cute. That's what Lakash was trying to relate to Isom, but Isom got confused. Something about first 300 days. Not sure if it's just anecdotal or maybe research back, but he was trying to explain to Isom. Yeah, I'm glad that Lacoste went back later to talk more with the police officers because I get the feeling like he didn't think he had gotten through to the police officers with, with the seriousness of what he was saying about the Adelsons. Donna must be freaking out, not being able to talk to her beloved every day. Oh, you have an eight-year-old golden retriever. Yeah, that's great. Why, why don't, why won't they arrest Donna? TF, are they waiting for y'all? Yeah, I think they're waiting to see what happens with Charlie first. If there's any chance that he might turn on his mother, which I, I think is is very low, but it could still happen. You never know. Because I thought it was really interesting hearing from those three ex-convicts on Surviving the Survivors show a couple of weeks ago. And one of the guests, I think his name was AJ, he said, oh, you know, I've seen it all the time where, you know, people will turn on their mother, their brother, their sister, you know, they'll turn on their their lovers or whoever, you know, like there's no more loyalty anymore, you know, for some people once they're sitting there in the slammer and really concerned about what, what they could potentially be facing themselves. Yeah. So, um, so I, I feel like it could be strategy to to kind of pick them off one by one as opposed to you know swooping up and arresting donna along with charlie at the same time actually lacoste is a dream witness articulate he does not lie and has self-awareness yeah i saw that on the stand where um it really does enhance his credibility too where he would be asked questions where they wanted him to sort of speculate or he would just flat out say you know i'm not an expert in this or i don't you know, like he, he seems like he really wants to be accurate with what he's saying on the stand. He's not just going to shoot off his mouth. So, um, yeah, very intelligent witness who, who really thinks through things. Yeah. Wendy's true colors were shining through. Anything can happen. Yes. Yes. That second time Lacoste went in, the cop did not take him too seriously and also said he believed Wendy Adelson was involved, but time would tell. Yeah. Exactly. So I wonder how that investigator feels now. Thanks. I don't appreciate Christy saying I'm team Wendy just because I think Lacoste is kind of a wuss and she thinks he's a hero. What did he do that anyone else wouldn't do? Nothing. Yeah. Well, I mean, at least he was willing to, to speak repeatedly to the police officers about everything he knew. Uh, Donna should grow a spine and finally come clean. Oh, you know she won't. Yeah, she's not going to just just walk up to the to investigators and tell every say everything happened a certain way. Yeah. Uh, 
Not everyone is as articulate as Lacoste, so he's a dream witness. Yeah. At least Donna knows where Charlie is at night. That's right. Yeah. The suspense is terrible. I hope it will last. Willy Wonka. Yeah, good quote. The older cop was more experienced and took him seriously. I suppose they were being cautious as he would have been a disgruntled ex-boyfriend. Yeah, and even Lacoste mentioned that. Like he, he said something about how he didn't want to come off as some disgruntled ex-boyfriend. I said, sorry, Michael Palmer. I thought you were Team Adelson, sweetheart. <laughs> okay. The unmeshed family where the kids compete for love of narcissistic parents, so they'll do anything to please them. Charlie trying to please mom for her love, sad. Yeah, he always wanted to get approval and to seem like he knew everything and he should be listened to and um, he can control everything, handle every situation. So, um, okay. Well, it looks like we've reached the end of our comments. It's been almost an hour, so I just thought that it would be interesting to have an open discussion and a little bit of a reaction to Lacasse's interview. I mean, I have to admit, I was surprised that um, that mentor lawyer put up the videos. Granted, they are edited, but, you know, people do realize that, um, you know, Lacasse and the witnesses involved, they're, they're just regular people and that there could be repercussions for you know, what they say, or they could face more criticism, if not actual threats. So um, yeah, because uh, there are there are more things that were said during the police interviews that didn't get shown. And I guess, I, again, out of respect for him, I'm not going to reveal them, but they are even more damaging to the Adelsons as well as, you know, Charlie and Wendy specifically in regards to their character. And it really made me feel like, wow, you know, the people really acted like this. And these are educated people that are well off and they had a lot to lose. And yet, you know, just because you're well educated and you have money doesn't mean that you have morals or know how to treat people right. So um, it, it was just really shocking to me to, to hear about all these things. And, and I do find him to be very credible. Okay. So Harley says, as a professor, Jeffrey is very well versed and able to convey details to an audience. I thought he did an awesome job. Yes, exactly. Yeah, so I hope he knows that, you know, the vast majority of people out there um, support him and, and believe him. Yeah. Um, so it makes you a hero because you tell the truth. Yes, actually, surprisingly, it is surprising when people are willing to just come out and not only tell the truth, but give lots of details and um you know, I mean, he, he put, in a way, he did put his own life or his personal safety on the line. Yeah. So, um, so to me, that is a, is a big deal because of plenty of other criminal cases that I have followed where people just, you know, are wishy-washy or they just say they don't want to get involved or they're not going to just proactively go to law enforcement to say things. So, um, I mean, contrast Lacoste with June, for example, you know, like some people aren't as um, forthcoming and they're willing to backpedal on things to protect certain people. You know, I mean, compare Lacoste to, to some of the other witnesses that we saw involved. Um, so, so yeah, I mean, I, I think he is definitely to be commended for, for that. You know, it's kind of sad that, you know, we have to be happy and really cheer on people just for being honest in a court of law. But we see that plenty of people are, are more than willing to not be honest in a court of law. Hope Chucky will throw Wendy on the bus. Donna is going down anyway. Yeah, and, and I did mentioned something about this and then somebody was like oh you know like he's never gonna turn against his parents and it's true that if i started thinking about it more and if charlie is going to throw wendy under the bus then i think that pretty much means that he would have to implicate donna at least maybe not his father but donna is so like we said enmeshed in this story you know there's just like so much evidence involving donna also, that if he's going to throw Wendy under the bus, then he probably would have to come clean and, and tell the full truth about Donna also. So, I, I mean, somehow I don't think that he can just only implicate Wendy to the state and then say, oh, but my mom had nothing to do with it. You know, I don't think they're going to let that fly. So, um, so perhaps he's not going to turn against any of them because implicating Wendy would, um, in my opinion, necessarily also intertwine Donna. Yeah. 
Oh yeah. Yeah, definitely. We would, we would do the same. Yeah, totally. Totally. You know, I mean, not to start talking about myself, but I have talked to law enforcement about some investigations um, in other matters and stuff, but a lot of people would not do that. And he knew how everyone thought Wendy was wonderful. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Christy, that's what I said. Yeah. Thanks, Judy. Appreciate your continued excellent coverage of this case. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, guys. Thanks for caring about, about Dan Markell and the Markell family and keeping this in the news so that it doesn't get brushed under the rug because it seems like every day I keep hearing about new criminal cases. So there are so many crimes out there. And he knew, oh, yeah, okay. Everyone thought Wendy was wonderful. I have a suspicion that the tapes were broadcast by ML to take the wind out of Stephen Epstein's book, which some say capitalizes and spins Lacoste. ML would not release without permission. Yeah, that. Well, I I agree that I'm pretty sure you know mental lawyer. He he's a very ethical person, so he wouldn't do that without without permission. Yeah. So um, not sure. Um, Let's see, it's my favorite comment of the day. Oh yeah, I was gonna mention Shadrach, yeah, in terms of um, being being persuasive. I mean, he's, he had no reason to be lying either. You know, you could tell that he was like, why the hell did I get involved with this? You know, <laughs> like, get me out of here. But but he, he was a really good witness also, just like flat out saying what he witnessed. So, um, Oh, thank you. Thank you, whoever. Oh, Michael Palmer, thank you so much for your super sticker. I, I appreciate that. Um, they're a family of sociopaths. I think they'll all throw each other under the bus at some point. Yeah, it, it could be. I mean, it seems like Charlie is having a really rough time already at Leon County Jail based on True Lifestyle's latest video where um, there's another inmate who's there for life for um, assaulting children and and committing armed robbery, and Charlie is having some problems with that inmate already. Shadrick Nobles was a star of the first trial, 100%. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, he was, he was a really good, interesting witness, and I like the way that he would kind of talk back to the attorneys. <laughs> so, um, what JPJ said, comparing Lacoste and Umchinda makes my head swim. Yeah. Also, Charlie would have to admit guilt, something he'll never do. Yeah, I think he's too arrogant that he would he would just sort of like Katie be delusional and think that, well, I'm going to beat this rap. Yeah, believe it. <laughs> Agree. Each angling for himself or herself at this stage of the game. I find the comparison hilarious. Detective Dora. Okay, thank you, Laser Wolf. Okay, LOL. Thank you, Deborah Jacobs. Okay. Yeah. Sometimes I think of that too. Yeah. It's funny how, how some of us are thinking alike. I find myself using believe it quite a bit these days. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's really funny. Maybe he needs to trademark that and put sell t-shirts or something. Okay. Wonderful life. As always, Judy, keep shining. Thank you, Sophia, for all your support. Yeah. Thank you, Angela, and also Michael for, for your super sticker. Hi, Judy and chat. Hi, Patty. Yeah, it was funny. Shadrick asked an attorney for Katie if he'd ever seen crack cocoons being made. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. He's he's just really funny. Yeah, I thought it was also kind of funny when Luis Rivera was uh, was he talking back to DeCoste? I think he said something like there's nothing about the Latin Kings going on here or something. So so don't ask me about that again or something to that effect. I thought that was kind of funny. Oh yeah, crack cocaine. Yeah, yeah I was like, crack cocoons? Okay. Um, okay. Thanks for all you do, Judy. Your ex-husband must have... <laughs> no, actually, it was kind of like, again, this is why I identify with this Markel Adelson divorce or marriage situation because it was actually my decision to, um, to end the marriage. So, um, yeah, so... Um, okay, great. Yeah, thank you, Patty, for watching on replay also. So it's time for me to get back to work. Got lots of phone calls and emails to return and documents to review and stuff. So, um, okay. 
Luis Rivera gave some lip to Christopher DeCosta. And that was good. Yeah. Yeah. Always interesting to hear some of the back and forth banter in trials. So, so we have to thank the state of Florida for having those sunshine laws so that we can actually see all these trials up close and personal. You know, there's something more gripping about watching a trial live, maybe on TV or whatever, as opposed to just reading a summary from a news article after the fact. So, um, yeah, it's so interesting to watch all these trials going on in Florida. Not to be weird, but now that you wore the gray suit, lucky suit of Wendy's, I hope you won't wear the purple dress press release dress of Wendy's. She's pathetic. No, yeah, I, I am not going to go out and find a purple dress. Um, yeah, so we're... Was it was it Lacoste who said that her her boobs were hanging out or something like like why would she put up that that Photoshop picture of herself? She never looks that good in real life. Her father photoshopped the picture. <laughs> Donna appears to have zero interest in her other three grandkids. Yeah, that that's really sad. I mean, I don't know about Charlie's kid because Charlie's child does look a lot like him. So you would think Donna would be really excited. And and as far as I know that child's mother and the child are still living somewhere around Florida or Fort Lauderdale area. So um, so I'm not 100% sure if jo Donna has no interest with the with Charlie's kid. Who knows? Yeah, I don't have the insider information there. Yeah, thank you, State of Florida, for Sunshine Laws. Thank you, Deep Dive True Crime, for putting up um, this video for us to all look at and learn more. Thank you, Jeffrey Lacoste, for, for all the information he willingly shared yeah, Victoria's Secret chucks. <laughs> okay, they're better off for it. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, the child looks just like just like Charlie. I'm amazed Wendy hasn't has had breast augmentation as superficial as that family is. Well, we don't know. I mean, maybe she did. I have no idea. Yeah, I did notice in in the some of the old pictures, it, it looks Wendy's nose looks different. So. I don't know. I mean, the mom, it, it looks very obvious that Donna has had some sort of nose job because her nose almost looks like Latoya Jackson's. But um, yeah, who knows what Wendy has had done. Yeah, Botox and brow lift, perhaps. Yeah, um, maybe fillers or something. Yeah, but I'm not a dermatologist. So, okay, well, time to get going back to work. Um, thank you guys all for being out there and caring about the case. And tomorrow, I think at one o'clock, uh, Don DeCristo and I are going to do another joint live stream where we're going to continue reading the rest of the family court filings in the case uh, Wendy Adelson versus Dan Markell. So have a great day then. Yeah. Okay. Thank you all. Yeah. Oh, okay. No, <laughs> okay. Yeah. These are really funny comments. I'll have to go back and read all the comments later. Okay. See you guys tomorrow. Have a good day.